the streets. Are you ready to take the streets? Before we begin, before we begin, we have to acknowledge the lands we are on. Because the liberation of Palestine is one with the liberation of indigenous people everywhere, including, including the indigenous people of Turtle Island. They are our brothers and sisters and people, and we stand together in this fight for liberation and for justice. that the lands which constitute present-day Mississauga as part of the treaty and traditional territories of the Mississaugas of the Credit, First Nation, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, the Huron Wendat, and the Angot Nations. For over 150 years, the settler state of Canada has enacted a genocide and ethnic cleansing and land dispossession against indigenous people of this land. And what we are witnessing today in Gaza is a genocide. And we know that the indigenous people on Turtle Island continue to experience similar repression to what we are seeing in Gaza and all of Palestine today. We honor the land defenders across Turtle Island and we honor our indigenous siblings and friends in our ongoing resistance against Canadian settler colonialism and settler colonialism everywhere. We know that the ethnic cleansing that Palestinians face is something that the indigenous people of Turtle Island have faced continuously since Canada's inception. Glory to indigenous land defenders everywhere and glory to our people's struggle against colonialism and imperialism from Turtle Island to Palestine. From Turtle Island to Palestine. From Turtle Island to Palestine. Colonialism is... When I say, who keeps us safe? You say, we keep us safe. Who keeps us safe? We know that the state is not on our side. And we know that the Canadian state not only funds the genocide in Gaza, but also works to suppress voices calling for justice and freedom for Palestine and Palestinians. Shame! Shame! We reject the idea that the state agents like the police will keep us safe. We have marshals wearing yellow vests if there is any safety concerns, you go to these marshals. If there is any safety concerns, you go to the medics that are wearing the red crosses. When I say who keeps us safe, what do you say? We keep us safe. Who keeps us safe? Now we're gonna take the streets and start marching and shut down Mississauga. But before we do that, in order to keep you guys safe, in order to keep us safe, I need all of you behind the banner. The banners that are in the middle are gonna approach. You're gonna go behind the banners. Please, this is for your safety and ours. Free, free!
Palestinian women and Palestinian children. Palestinian children executing women physically and sexually assaulting girls. Are you not enraged? Are you not enraged? The atrocities committed against us worsen as we waver between grief and rage. For 442 days, we have watched them move their goalposts. Evacuate, they say. To where? There is nowhere to go. They turn, they turn the north to dust and shoot anyone who tries to go back. First, they said evacuate the middle, then evacuate to the south, now evacuate from the south. Next we were here, we have opened the Rafah crossing, evacuate to Sinai or die!
is why every week we raise our voice in solidarity with our people demanding justice. It is our duty, it is our duty to stand up for our Palestinian brothers and sisters because the children being born there right now are like our children. They are our family. 14,000 children have been murdered so far. That is why we're here. And we invite you to stand with us in solidarity with our Palestinian brothers and sisters. We're here because we're demanding Canada to end all funding to the Israeli Zionist entity. We demand an arms embargo immediately. We demand the lifting of the siege on Gaza. We demand the lifting of the siege on Gaza and an end to the occupation and the liberation of Palestine from the river to the sea. Our first speaker who's gonna speak to you right now is called Lina Halis. Lina Halis is a Palestinian writer, a poet, and a human rights advocate based in Toronto. She currently works with the indigenous land Native Women's Association of Canada and her written work is published in Soul in Space magazine and Muchacha Zine. Please give it up for Lena. We are the children born from olive trees into exile. We swim to stay afloat along streams and empires. Daughters of Palestine's diaspora combust to ignite the path to a road less traveled, leave a trail between checkpoints, the graves between our the graves with our searching fingertips only to find bodies colonized by broken promises. I repatch the earth with hopes and memories of my ancestors. Collect their bones and bury them into the flaming soil of an undying legacy. Daughters of Palestine's diaspora take flight amidst battle cries, forgotten by tomorrow's survive in the telling of story. We are the children born from olive trees into resistance. The pulses of our beating hearts is to a revolution. Those were some excerpts that I shared from one of my core poems that I wrote a few years ago, reflecting my lived experience as a Palestinian living in exile, living in diaspora. And my family's origin story is a very common one. My father came to this God-forsaken country as a young man during the first Intifada of 1987 from Gaza. And we've been here as settlers ever since. Most of our family in Gaza is currently internally displaced, starving, and living in constant bombardment and fear. Some of them are Canadian citizens. We've applied for their visas to get them out. But navigating not only this incredibly difficult, but also this incredibly racist system has been a nightmare. It's laden in double standards and it's steeped in incredibly in invasive questions. Now, I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty of what those double standards are because we've seen week after week, month after month, what those examples are from the media to policies to legislation. But it is worth noting that just yesterday, 
Trudeau signed a three billion dollar a three billion dollar security agreement to support Ukraine, saying that Ukrainians are dying and fighting for our collective future. And this same week, Canada decided to pull out of the ICJ. Since January, we've been waiting for a code, and we're still waiting. But of course, many of us with family histories rooted in imperial aggression and colonial violence to us, that should not come as a surprise. Let's not forget that the very foundation of this country was built on the backs of black and indigenous people through genocide and enslavement. A settler colonial entity by definition will never not support another settler colonial entity because it otherwise it risks it runs the risk of putting its very existence into question. We have also lost countless of relatives, two of whom are my first cousins. Am returned 17 a week before his martyrdom. He was a high school student who loved to stay active and loved sports. His sister, Samira was a third year pharmaceutical student who loved life and loved to smile. If she was still alive today, she would have celebrated her 21st birthday earlier this week. This past summer, my parents had the opportunity to go visit family in Gaza for the first time since the second Intifada 22 years ago. When they were giving their goodbyes, these cousins of mine asked if they can come back with them, claiming that there is no life in Gaza, that there is no future in Gaza. Those were their last words to us. Now I share this story with you, not only to keep their memory alive, but to remind us of why we are all gathered here today. We are experiencing a collective shift and it is our moral and collective duty to answer that call. As we are being challenged to expand our capacity for more, more grief, more rage, more death, more destruction, we must not only bear witness to the truth and stay engaged, but we must also allow ourselves to hold more love, more justice, more liberation, more solidarity, more resistance, more togetherness, and more revolution. We are far too privileged to say that we are tired and give in to despair. The people of Gaza are tired. My family is tired. Our oppressors want us to give in to despair, but I refuse to give them the satisfaction. I will not let their murders go in vain. We need to keep fighting. We need to keep going. Keep the momentum up. This is not just the beginning of the end for Israel, but it's also the very beginning of the end for the so-called West as we know it. change in the history of this movement. Growing up, most people didn't know who Palestine was. Now they know who she is. They know her children and her legacy. And this is just the beginning. So hold on tight to that hope. The price is far too high, but I believe in the depths of my being that we will see a free Palestine in our lifetime.
each other safe because at the end of the day, the people united will never be defeated. Say it with me. United will never be defeated. Remember, comrades, when, not if, when we liberate Palestine, we liberate the world. Love and solidarity always. Stay blessed. Thank you. United will never be defeated. The people united will never be defeated. The people. Please give it up for Lina. Please give it up for Lina. Keep her family in your prayers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them the highest level of Jannah, Ya Rabb. May Allah protect all our brothers and sisters in Palestine and in Gaza, Ya Rabb. Our next speaker. Our next speaker is Lama Egad, a producer and media presenter and president of the Multicultural Community Association in Oakville. Please give it up for Lama. Brothers and sisters, my friends, is my voice okay? Yes. It's Palestine that will free the world from colonization. It's Palestine and the pain and suffering of our brothers and sisters in Gaza that are bringing us together every single weekend since the ass assault on Gaza. No matter how cold it is, who's cold right now? Anybody is cold? It is justice that brings us together. It is humanity that brings us together. It is the free voice of Gaza that brings us together. We will stay out on the streets to demand our rights to demand for a free Palestine. Free, free. We are here. We are all here. Pro-Palestinians, Muslims, non-Muslims. I see the Jordanian flag. I see the Moroccan flag. I see the Syrian flag. I see the Iraqi flag. Only Palestine that brings us together. We are all Canadians. Let us not re always remember that we're Canadian. We have the right to call out our politicians that are funded with our tax money. CBC is funded by our tax money. We have every right to call them out. Hold them responsible for our families that are being slaughtered in Gaza with the Canadian money. We, we demand the end of arming Israel by our money. Shame on them, shame. The media should be the voice of the voiceless, the voice of the oppressed. The media in Canada is complicit. CP24 and CTV, we are ashamed of them. We have to call them out. We should also applaud CTV and the and some reports in CBC that have spoken and said the truth about these protests. Do we all remember Spider-Man? We should thank him 
It is not anti-Semitic to climb a building. It's not anti-Semitic. It is not anti-Semitic to hold a Palestinian flag on top of a hospital. It's not anti-Semitic. The hospital in Toronto was not a target. This is all misinformation by the Canadian media and the Zionist radical organization. We must demand from our politician to protect us from weaponizing anti-Semitism against us. We must demand to fund back the UNRWA. And let me say this, as a Canadian independent journalist, I tell you, Israel is a terrorist apartheid state. We call for cease fire now. Cease fire now. As we have applauded the voices of the Muslim brothers and sisters and the NCCM, let us not forget the Palestinian Christians who are also suffering from racism as well. They are with, uh, with us. Our politicians are also being bullied by those radical Zionist disgusting organizations that are spreading lies and mis misinformation. We call for all our politicians and MPs to wake up, to open their eyes, one of them, the leader of the Ontario Liberal Party, the former mayor, Boney Grumby, who made a disgusting statement calling the protesters anti-Semitic in Toronto. We demand for her to apologize and to realize her mistake. She has been bullied by the Zionist radical organization. This needs to end. Free, free Palestine. I'm speaking to you coming all the way from Oakville. I just want to remind everybody that tomorrow we are hosting an emergency action at Town Hall in Oakville. Please for, follow Oakville for Palestine to learn about the actions that are happening there against the mayor of Oakville, Mayor Rob Burton. Mayor Rob Burton had silenced us in Oakville. He called us anti-Semitic. We have launched a petition asking for his resignation. He must resign now and apologize. The petition has received over 1,900 um, signatures. We need to collect more signature and hold them accountable. All those complicit MPs and mayor and ministers must resign now. Cease fire now. Cease fire now. Lastly, one last point. They have cut the funding on UNRWA. That makes Canada complicit with this genocide. Remember that all of us have to activate our relief role to help our families in Gaza. We all must fund the UNRWA. We all must send aid to UNRWA. From Canada, we have to send them aid. It should not stop it, stop us from helping them. Even if they cut the funds from UNRWA, we are obligated to stand up for our brothers and sisters and help them with aid, with food, with money, and shelter. We have to send them shelter. Free, free, Palestine. Free, free. Much appreciate it. Give it up, give it up, give it up. Please, please. Please.
Lama. Please give it up for Lama. Who here has boycotted Indigo? So you must know why we're boycotting Indigo. The founder and CEO Heather Reisman funds a foundation that sends foreigners to Israel and join the army. Supporting and shopping at Indigo is directly supporting this Israeli genocidal state. Boycotting Indigo means boycotting chapters as well. Boycott Indigo! Today marks the 142nd day of the ongoing genocide and the situation continues to worsen. As the holy month of Ramadan approaches, a time dedicated to reflection, prayer, and community, we must keep our beloved Gaza in mind. Many of us are fortunate enough to be able to spend this sacred month with our families, enjoying iftars, enjoying sahurs with hot meals, a roof over our heads, and access to clean drinking water. But most importantly, we're fortunate enough to not have to question our likelihood of living in every single moment of every single day. Unfortunately, due to the imposed blockade and the endless bombardments, Gazans will be spending this Ramadan differently, in search of food, in search of their loved ones stuck underneath the rubble. As a result of all this, Gazans have now resulted to makeshift food. Considering the cost of food in Gaza has skyrocketed, making necessities rare and unattainable, they have resorted to making meals using grains, animal food, and grass. Shame! Don't be fooled, as this this is part of the Zionist entity's plan, a starvation tactic. How cruel must you be to starve children? How cruel must you be to starve pregnant women? And how cruel must you be to starve human beings? To make matters worse, the Zionist entity, the terrorist regime, has stated that they will invade Rafah and execute a ground invasion if their hostages are not returned by March the 10th. Shame! As some of you may know, this has also been a part of the plan all along, to push the whole population of Gaza into a corner and force them to leave to Egypt or die! Shame! The idea of launching a military operation against over 1.4 million Palestinians is already morbid enough, but the added caveat of just before Ramadan starts shows the inhumane monsters we are dealing with. This, this is a form of collective punishment. This is something that is clearly prohibited under international law. Shame! It is hard. It is hard to feel helpless in moments. It's not hard to feel helpless in moments like these, but it's also a call to action for every single one of you that is here today. All of you being here today is a stand, a stand united in the face of the terrorist regime, saying we will not back down, we will not forget, nor will we forgive. We demand an arms embargo, we demand hands off Rafa, and we demand an end to the genocide. Just before I finish this, I have an important announcement. As I mentioned on March 10th, the Zionist terrorist entity has stated that the hostages, if they are not returned, there will be a ground invasion on Rafah. What we have done as organizers is we have come together and we, are, we have announced on March the 9th that there will be a national march in Ottawa 
all the Palestinian communities, all the organizers, all the people that stand in solidarity, not with Palestinians only, but with all of human beings, with the right side, with the side against genocide. We, we have come together, like I mentioned, as a national march on March 9th. This is not only the most likely date before Ramadan, but this date is also International Women's Day. And if you know the situation in Gaza, you know the continuous bombarding on our women, our pregnant women, and on their children. Shame! So what I want all of you to do is, first of all, I want to see every single one of your faces in Ottawa on March 9th. Second of all, what I want all of you to do is check our Instagram at Toronto for Palestine. This will keep you up to date for all bus announcements, for every single bit of detail. Go on to Toronto for Palestine. If you need bus transportation, we will provide that for you. So thank you all very much. And we're not done. We're not finishing here. We're gonna continue. Free, free Palestine. Free, free. On that note, if every single one of you look to your left and look to your right right now, look to your left and look to your right, genuinely do it. Look to your left and right. Every single person that is here today is not Palestinian, that's a fact. Every single person that is here today is not Muslim, and that's a fact. Every single person that is here today is not Arab, and that's also a fact. It doesn't matter what race you are, it doesn't matter your religion, it doesn't matter what walk of life you come from, it doesn't matter your creed, your skin color, none of that matters. What matters is that we are here today fighting for the right side, fighting for humanity. So that, that is why we say, in our millions, in our... Just to once again prove it, I have a little test for us to do. So what I'm gonna say is first, for all the people who are Palestinian, make some noise! Wow, those Arabs, that is genuinely pathetic. So again, for all the people that are Palestinian, make some noise! And now watch this. For all the people that are not Palestinian, make some noise! Again, for all the people that are not Palestinian, make some noise! I don't know about you guys, but to me, that, that is not just us screaming, that is not just us chanting, that shows hope. That shows heart, that shows soul. That shows that every single one of you here today, you understand. You understand that fighting for another person's life, another person's rights and freedoms means something. Coming up week after week means that we will never forget. We will never forgive. We will never stop until Palestine is liberated. Until the people of Palestine are liberated. Until we can all go into Al-Aqsa once again, inshallah.
Wait, wait, wait. So, as they say, they don't like from the river to the sea. Okay, let's just switch it. From the sea to the river. Before we end off here, I can sense that our energy levels have dropped again. So in order to keep you warm, so you can keep me warm, so we can keep each other warm, we're gonna do the shut it down chant one more time. So whatever I say, you're gonna say. You know, I always hyped like Mississauga. I always said, oh, Mississauga has all the Arabs here, all the blah, blah, blah. You guys are, yeah, and in Toronto might be better off, I'm not gonna lie. Whatever I say, you're gonna say. Wait, wait, was... wait, wait, wait. Tell people to come closer. Let's circle the track. Come okay, closer. come closer, come closer. The haltos, now you can come closer. Now the haltos, you can... It's now okay, the banner. Can... Now we can say, screw the banner. Screw the banner, sorry. Not screw the banner. Really. Respectfully. Come closer. Everybody, come around, come around. There's so much space on the sides. The haltos, now you don't want to come. Okay, khalas. <laughs> Yellow, we're gonna do the shut it down chant one more time. Fadahtuni, fadahtuni. Wallah, hazi hello and nami rishon. Okay. Whatever I say, you're gonna say. Shut it down. Whatever I say, you're gonna say. Shut it down. Now I want you guys to do one thing. Everybody, put your phones down, put your signs away. Don't put the flags on the ground. I don't want my flag to touch the ground. So just put your flag to the side, but keep your hands up high. Every oh, single person, we're gonna do our chant. chin. Every single person, anybody who's able to, put your hands up high. This one does include the khaltos. So fikit laylo arus, okay. Okay, everybody hands up high. Every single person, hands up high. Even the police officers. Peel police. Okay. On the drummer's mark, it's four claps, not five, not six, four. I don't know why some of you, we've been doing this for so long. It's four claps. Four claps and then Gaza. On the drummer's mark. Gaza! <laughs> That was amazing. Now, we're gonna do 10 times louder, but this time, instead of saying Gaza, we're gonna say Rafa, okay? So again, everybody's hands up in the air. Listen, I keep you warm, you keep me warm, we keep each other warm, because I'm cold. Yalla, everybody's hands up high. Every single person, my cousins included, hands up high. Rafa, Rafa. The next chant is for the media. We want everyone to bring out your phone and record the next chant. When you share it around, I want you to use the hashtag arms embargo now. And I want you to use T4P in your hashtag. Your phones are ready. Yeah. Your phones are ready. Yeah. One, we are the people. Two, Two. we won't be silent. Okay, once more, I want to remind everyone that we have our national march in Ottawa on March 9th. Who's going to be there? Who's going to be there? Who's going to be there? The National March is so important because the Zionist State of Israel has said 
that they're going to go full invasion on Rafah. We are not going to allow that to happen. And by being in this colonized land, it's our moral obligation to hold the government accountable. And the least we could do as citizens on this stolen land is hold our government accountable and demand a full arms embargo and a full arms embargo in the Zionist state of Israel. Our money should not go towards arms to fund the killing of our people. Stop f funding the killing of our brothers, funding the killing of our sisters in Palestine, in Gaza, in Rafah, and all the way from the river to the sea. So again, it's so important to shake this country, to hold it accountable, and end all complicity with the Zionist state of Israel. You will see and you'll be able to find all the details on our social media, Toronto number four Palestine. We will share all the details there. There is a link tree to sign petition, to educate yourself and be up to date on all the actions we take in the GTA and around the country from coast to coast. We're gonna do one last chant together. We're gonna do a dua, a supplication after that. And we're gonna end with a prayer in the square. Whoever wants to pray, please stay and then to pray together in the square. And after that, we need, unfortunately, to end it. I know no one wants to go home. I know we're angry. I know we're frustrated. But it's a long-term battle. It does not end today. It does not end tomorrow. It does not end next week. We have to be patient. We have to take a deep breath because we have been colonized for 100 years. We do not expect to free Palestine in a day. We do not expect to free Palestine in a week. We have to educate ourselves. We have to educate all the people around us. And keep in mind, this is not just a fight for Palestine. This is not just a fight for, for Gaza. This is a fight for good against evil. And today, Gaza has united all the world to join the good side against evil. For years, we have been hitting these streets. And we always say that Gaza will free the world. Gaza will free the world and Gaza now is freeing you, is freeing you, is freeing me and it's freeing all the world. So one last time for Gaza. Drummers, are you ready? Cameras, are you ready? Hands in there, are you ready? Flags in there, are you ready? Drummers, after you. Gaza! Gaza! I, I want you all to listen intensely and say Ameen as Mahmoud, my comrade here, prays and gives a prayer and dua for our Palestinian brothers and sisters. Please, as we approach Ramadan, we have to remember how important our dua is and our prayers are. So please listen intensely with your heart. Feel the dua and inshallah may Allah accept our dua. Ameen. Say it like you mean it from your heart. Say it like you mean it for your own brother and sister. Allahumma inna nas'aluka an tufarrija an ahli Gaza. فرجا قريبا آجلا غير آجل يا الله اللهم ارحم شهداهم
شاف جرحاهم فك أسراهم احقن دماءهم ودماء المسلمين اللهم احفظ أهلنا في غزة من كل مكروه وسوء احفظهم بعينك التي لا تنام اللهم إنا نستودعك غزة وأهلها أمنها وأمانها ليلها ونهارها رجالها ونساها شبابها وأطفالها وشيوخها يا من لا تضيع عنده الودائع اللهم إنهم جوعا فأطعمهم عطشا فاسقهم حفاة فاحملهم عراة فاكسهم يا الله يا ربنا كن العون والناصر لهم فلا ناصر ولا معين لهم إلا أنت اللهم سدد رميهم ثبت الأرض من تحت أقدامهم انصرهم على من عاداهم أمددهم بمدد من عندك يا الله اللهم عليك بأعدائهم احصهم عددا اقتلهم بددا ولا تغادر منهم أحدا أرنا فيهم يوما كيوم الأحزاب اللهم إنهم قد قتلوا الأطفال الرضع والشيوخ الركع اللهم إنهم يتموا الأطفال رملوا النساء هدموا البيوت وعاثوا فسادا في الأرض اللهم شتت شملهم فرق جمعهم واجعل الدائرة تدور عليهم اللهم اخذل من خذلهم اقتل من قتلهم جوع من جوعهم واظلم من ظلمهم وخوف من خوفهم اللهم أرنا فيهم عدلك يا الله اللهم أرنا فيهم عدلك يا الله اللهم إنك كنت قولك وقولك الحق دعوني أستجب لكم فها نحن ندعوك يا الله فاستجب لنا يا ربنا وصل اللهم على محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين. Now let's read the Fatiha for a quick moment for all of the mothers and brothers and sisters of Gaza. Thank you everyone for coming again. We're gonna end by doing Asr prayer in the square over there, insha'Allah. And hope to see you next week, insha'Allah. Stay safe.